Chapter 26 Thomas sat frozen in his chair, a sickness growing in his stomach like an infestation. He'd been through the whole gamut of emotions in the short time that since he had arrived in the glade. Fear, loneliness, desperation, sadness, even the slightest hint of joy. But this was something new, to hear a person say I hate you enough that they want to kill you. Galley's crazy, he told himself. He's completely insane. But the thought only increased his worries. Insane people could really be capable of anything. The council members sat in silence, seemingly as shocked as Thomas at what they had just seen. Newton Winston finally let go of Minho. All three of them sullenly walked to their chairs and sat down. He's finally whacked for good, Minho said, almost in a whisper. Thomas couldn't tell if he had meant for others to hear him. Well, you're not the bloody saint in the room, Newt said. What were you thinking? That was a little overboard, don't you think? Minho squinched up his eyes and pulled his head back, as if he were baffled by Newt's question. Don't give me that garbage. Every one of you loves seeing that slint head get his dues, and you know it. It's about time someone stood up to his clunk. He's on the council for a reason, Newt said. Dude, he threatened to break my neck and kill Thomas. The guy's mentally whacked, and you better send someone right now to throw him in the slammer. He's dangerous. Thomas couldn't have agreed more, and once again almost broke his order to stay quiet, but, but stopped himself. He didn't want to get in any more trouble than he was already in, but he didn't know how much longer he could last. Maybe he had a good point, Winston said, almost too quietly. What? Minho asked. Mirroring Thomas's thoughts exactly, Winston looked surprised at the acknowledgement that he had, that he'd said anything. His eyes darted around the room before he explained. Well, he has been through the changing. Griever stung him in the middle of the day, just outside the west door. That means he has memories, and he said the greenie looks familiar. Why would he make that up? Thomas thought about the changing and the fact that it brought back memories. The idea hadn't occurred to him before. But would it be worth worth it to get stung by the grievers? Go through that horrible process just to remember something? He pictured Ben writhing in bed and remembered Albie's screams. No way, he thought. Winston, did you see what just happened? Frypan asked, looking incredulous. Galley psycho. You can't put that much stock in his rambling nonsense. What, you think Thomas here is a griever in disguise? Council rules or no council rules, Thomas thought. Thomas had finally had enough, sorry. He couldn't stay silent another second. Can I say something now? He asked, frustration raising the volume of his voice. I'm sick of you guys talking about me like I'm not here. Newt glanced up at him and nodded. Go ahead. This bloody meeting can't be much more screwed up. Thomas quickly gathered his thoughts, grasping for the right words, inside the swirling cloud of frustration, confusion, and anger in his mind. I don't know why Galley hates me. I don't care. He seems psychotic to me. As for who I really am, you all know just as much as I do. But if I remember correctly, we're here because of what I did out in the maze. Not because some idiot thinks I'm evil. Someone snickered, and Thomas quit talking, hoping he had gotten his point across. Newt nodded, looking satisfied. Good that. Let's get this meeting over with and worry about Galley later. We can't vote without all the members here. Winston insisted. Unless they are unless they're really sick, like Albie. For the love, Winston, Newt replied. I'd say Galley's a wee bit ill today, so we can continue without him. Thomas, defend yourself, then we'll take a vote on what we should do with you. Thomas realized his hands were squeezed up into fists on his lap. He relaxed them and wiped his sweaty palms on his pants. Then he began, not sure what he'd say before the words came out. I didn't do anything wrong. All I know is I saw two people struggling to get inside the walls and they couldn't make it. To ignore that because of some stupid rule seems selfish, cowardly, and, well, stupid. If you want to throw me in jail for trying to save someone's life, then go ahead. Next time, I promise, I'll point at them and laugh and then go eat some of Fry Pan's dinner. Thomas wasn't, wasn't trying to be funny. He was just dumbfounded by the, by the whole thing. Could even be an issue. Here's my recommendation, Newt said. You broke our bloody number one rule, so you get a day in the slammer. That's your punishment. I also recommend we elect you as runner, effective the second this meeting's over. 
You've proven more than one night than most trainees do in a week. As for you being the bug and keeper, forget it. He looked over at Minho. Galley was right on that count. Stupid idea. The comment hurt Thomas's feelings, even though he couldn't disagree. He looked to Minho for his reaction. The keeper didn't seem surprised, but argued all the same. Why? He's the best we have. I swear it. The best should be the keeper. Fine, Newt responded. If that's true, we'll make the change later. Give it a month and see if he proves himself. Minnow shrugged. Good that. Thomas quietly sighed in relief. He still wanted to be a runner, which surprised him considering what he had just gone through in the maze, but becoming the keeper right away sounded ridiculous. Newt glanced around the room. Okay, we've had several recommendations, so let's give it a go around. Oh, come on, Frypan said. Just vote. I vote for yours. Me too, Minno said. Everyone else chimed in their approval, filling Thomas with relief and a sense of pride. Winston was the only one to say no. Newt looked at him. We don't need your vote, but tell us what you're bon what's bonking around your brain. Winston gazed at Thomas carefully, then back to Newt. It's fine with me, but we shouldn't totally ignore what Gant Galley said. Something about it. I don't think he just made it up. And it's true that ever since Thomas got here, everything had been shucked and screwy. Fair enough, Newt said. Everyone put some thought into it. Maybe when we get it right and nice and bored, we can have another gathering to talk about it. Good that? Winston nodded. Thomas groaned at how invincible, invisible he had become. I love how you guys are just talking about me like I'm not here. Look, Tommy, Newt said. We just selected you as a bug and runner. Quit your crying and get out of here. Minho has a lot of training to give you. It hadn't really hit Thomas until then. He was gun going to be a runner. Explore the maze. Despite everything, he felt a, sh a shiver of excitement. He was sure they could avoid getting trapped out there at night again. Maybe he'd had this one and only turn of bad luck. What about my punishment? Tomorrow, Newt answered. The wake up till sunset. One day, Thomas thought, that won't be so bad. The meeting was dismissed and everyone except Mint, Newt and Minho had left the room in a hurry. Newt hadn't moved from his chair, where he sat jotting notes. Well, that was good times, he murmured. Minho walked over and playfully punched Thomas in the arm. It's all this shank's fault. Thomas punched him back. Keeper? You want me to be keeper? You're nuttier than Galley by a long shot. Minho faked an evil grin. Worked, didn't it? Aim high, hit low. Thank me later. Thomas couldn't help but smiling at the keeper's clever ways. A knock on the open door grabbed his attention. He turned to see who it was. Chuck stood there, looking like he'd just been chased by a griever. Thomas felt the grin fade from his face. What's wrong? Newt asked. Standing up, the tone of his voice only heightened Thomas's concern. Chuck was wringing his hands. Medjack sent me. Why? I guess Albie's thrashing around and acting all crazy, telling them he needs to talk to somebody. Newt made for the door, but Chuck held up his hand. Um, he doesn't want to see you. What do you mean? Chuck pointed at Thomas. He keeps asking for him. 